Sizinle beraber olduğunuz için çok teşekkür ederim. E, fotoğrafçılık alanında birçok önemli ödüle sahip olan Amerikalı fotoğrafçı Steve McCurry, günümüzün en iyi görsel yapımcılardan biri kabul edilmektedir. Can modernde gerçekleşecek özel olarak değerlenmiş bu dergi, sanatçının son 30 yılda dünyanın farklı birçok yerinde çektiği, en çok bilinen ve hatırlanan çalışmalarını bir araya getirmektedir. Dergimiz bu üç aralığa kadar görülebilir. E, Dergimizin moderatörü Pelin Fırat Hanım ve tercümanımız Gökhan Tümhan söyleyişi yönlendireceklerdir. Az sonra başlayacağız. Teşekkür ederiz. with Steve McCurry. American photographer Steve McCurry is universally recognized as one of today's finest image makers and has won many of photography's top awards. This special exhibition at Jai Modern brings together the most memorable and most beautiful of his images taken around the world for over the last 30 years. The exhibition may be visited, uh, visited until the 13th of December. Um, during our question and answer, there will be Jai Modern um, employees walking around with paper and pen. If you have any questions you would like to ask Steve McCurry, uh, you can write them down and they will help you. They're walking amongst you. And at the end of our question and answer, we will ask those questions to Steve McCurry. If you can also write down your name as well. Thank you. Söyleşi sırasında Carmodern çalışanları aramızda dolaşıyor olacaklar. Kağıt kalemleri var. Sormak istediğiniz sorularınızı kağıtta isimlerinizle beraber yazabilirsiniz. Sonlara doğru bu sorulardan e, Steve Bey'e soracağız. Sizin de bir katkınız olmuş olur. Merak ettim. Bir şey var. Sizin Teşekkür ederiz. Daha sonra başlayalım. Yapayım. Ee, tabii kırmızı renkteki yırtılmış şalı ve endişeyle merak arasındaki cam yeşili gözleriyle hafızalarımıza kazınan Afgan kızının fotoğrafçı Steve McCurry fotografik yolculuğunun 30 yılını kapsayan sergisiyle bu kez Cer Modern'de bizlerle. Steve, fotoğraf sanatının evrensel diline oldukça kuvvetli bir vurgu yaparak kültürler, dinler ve farklı coğrafyalarda anlattığı hikayelerinde hep insanı ve insani duygusallığı merkezde tutmuştur. Bu insanların hikayelerini hayatta tutunmak için gösterdikleri zor koşulları bazen tek bir fotoğraf üzerinden tüm dünyaya ee, anlatarak farkındalık yaratmıştır. Bu anlamda böylesine önemli bir insanı aramızda görmekten, ağırlamaktan çok büyük mutluluk duyuyoruz. Ee, çok da uzatmadan aslında sorularımıza başlamak istiyoruz. Kendisi de burada. Alkışlarınızı rica ediyorum Ankara'da bizimle olduğu için. Ve tabii fotoğraflanıyorsunuz. <gülüyor> so, I just started with my questions. Okay. Directly. So, Steve, it will be nice to start from the beginning of your career. How did your life as a professional photographer begin? Well, uh, my, uh, when I went to school, my dream was to be a filmmaker. And um, I uh, studied film, um, and, uh, but in the course of that study, I uh, discovered photography, uh, still photography, I took a photography class and uh, as time went on I decided that uh, photography was much more suited to my personality uh, in the sense that you could uh, uh, it, was, it was you were more free it was more spontaneous you could literally just walk around and take pictures without a script without any uh, without a team of people so that to me was much more satisfying than uh, Directing. Yeah. Directing the so, thanks. But, um, you know, actually, another point is that uh, 
when I was uh, 19, I, I lived in Europe for a year, and I, I kind of caught the uh, travel bug, and I decided that uh, whatever I did, whatever kind of work I uh, pursued in my life, I wanted travel to be a part of it. So uh, I uh, was kind of looking for something to do, and uh, when I discovered photography, this was like the perfect marriage. Uh, what was the first photograph you took? Of course, we are very uh, curious about that. And the one that helped you decide to be a photographer, actually. Uh, I uh, was, uh, as a young student, I decided to go to Mexico and just sort of travel and photograph. And the first picture which I thought had promise and I thought was interesting was of a, it was a really beautiful furniture store. And in that window of the furniture store was a, a beautiful sofa. It was like this with the grand tables and chairs. Very expensive. And just on the street was this homeless man sleeping right below the sofa, this beautiful sofa, but it was inside the storeroom. So I clicked that, and uh, when I got home, I, I thought that the irony of uh, this beautiful uh, living room set, and then this poor man, and the fact that there was this kind of disconnect between his life and this uh, other life. Thank you. And looking back uh, to then, has your work changed over time? And is there a difference in your photographs from when you first began to now? Uh, I think as you get more experience and as you get older, as you photograph more, like any uh, discipline, any kind of endeavor, any kind of work, in time you perfect your skill, you get better and better, you see better, you understand light better, and uh, I think my, I have a better sense of photography now than I did uh, back then. And uh, I think with, uh, with digital photography, uh, it's gotten even better. So we are curious, did you have any idols uh, or someone you looked up to as a photographer? Well, um, I think the main influence on my photography was a, a French photographer, uh, Henri, Henri Cartier-Bresson. Uh, he had photographed a lot in the 40s and the 50s, all in black and white. He had a great sense of uh, humanity, a great sense of composition, and his pictures are like so poetic and so well crafted. So I would say he was a, also a uh, uh, uh, Elliot Irwin, Elliot Irwin, uh, American photographer. Um, I think that um, uh, you know Andre Cortez, Hung uh, Hungarian photographer. I think uh, I, I think Eric Goulart, uh, great Turkish photographer, is somebody who uh, uh, he was very active in the 50s and the 60s and, uh, of a previous generation. Uh, I think he's influenced a number of photographers. So, uh, we understand that you visited India for 80 times. Why is India so special for you? Well, I think India is uh, such a diverse country. I mean, there's a lot of diverse countries, but India it has a kind of on another level in that you have uh, a large, mostly Hindu, but there's a large Muslim population, Christian population, Sikhs, Buddhists, and then there's a number of smaller religions. Uh, that's one point. Another point is you have extreme, one of the most extreme disparity between very rich and very poor. Uh, you don't have that contrast in most other countries. Uh, then you have people living in a, a 
very modern way, you know, very technologically modern, and uh, and then uh, people living in a maybe the same way they would have lived 500 years ago. So uh, you, you have all this. Uh, and there's also a kind of a chaos to in Indian culture. It's all this frenetic energy. So it, it creates a, a rich environment for, for photography. So we are, you know, seeing you in the areas of conflict like Afghanistan, Pakistan. Why are you choosing the areas of conflict? Uh, my sort of introduction to these areas of conflict was almost kind of an accident or kind of a coincidence. I just, by chance, happened to be on the Afghan-Pakistan border, and just by chance, I, I met some refugees who invited me to come in and photograph the, the, the, the war. Um, so I did that, and I went back over and over again, becoming very interested in the conflict, because I mean, I think I've gone to each one of these areas of conflict because these are important stories, they're dramatic stories, they're stories that are in some ways changing the course of history in that region. And uh, they're, uh, they're just, uh, it's history. You know, uh, uh, what happens uh, in the Middle East or Iraq or Afghanistan or what happens in places uh, uh, you know, this is how the world evolves, and to be a witness to that is, uh, is, a, is a special thing. So, um, you have the ability to portray a person's whole life with just one portrait, like the Afghan girl. We can understand lots of things from the, uh, the photograph. How do you achieve this? Well, there's sort of a, it's kind of a difficult question because there's a, if you meet somebody uh, and they, they fascinate you, the story in their face uh, strikes you as, as, as dramatic. Uh, I think there's a, a chemistry or some kind of relationship that is established between me, the photographer, and the subject. And I think this uh, enthusiasm uh, my enthusiasm for for them, they understand. There's somehow it's a magical, mystical uh, connection, and uh, it's it's hard to describe. It's it's hard to convey in words uh, the the uh, this perception of this connection between me and, uh, and the people who I people in this exhibition uh, or who capture my imagination on the street are, I, I think, very, they're very, they're very selected, very rare individuals that I think have an incredible look, incredible story and presence. And I kind of identify them and then I just want to try and capture their image, you know. Uh, your most famous photograph, the Afghan girl, is one of the most recognized photographs. Why do you think uh, that is? And how is it different to your other portraits? What is the difference between uh, the other portraits of yours? Uh, I think there's a lot of elements uh, that create this picture. One is uh, she's a very pretty little girls, uh, so you have that part, and then uh, you have, then you look closely, look more closely, and you see that her face is a bit dirty, dirt on her face, you can see a scar on her nose, her, her shawl is ripped, and her hair is a bit, you know, so you start to understand that then she has this really mesmerizing, hypnotic look. But it's not that it, it, you sense that there's something maybe not quite right, that there's maybe some uh, 
some trauma, something disturbing uh, that may have happened to her. Uh, so there's a, there's a genuine, I think, authentic quality of the picture. For me, it doesn't look at all as though it's, it's a planned or a posed picture. It's just, uh, you know, I'm there with my camera. This is the first time she's been photographed in her life. Uh, and uh, she's, so there's that, and then there's the fact that I'm the first foreigner and the first man with the camera. So there's this maybe a sense of curiosity. Uh, but there's also this, I think, this dignity in her expression. She's poor, she's a refugee, she's an orphan, very difficult life. Yet, she's still proud, and she's still, this, this uh, the, you know, the, the, the human spirit, uh, you know, conquering these adverse situations. So, uh, uh, it's it, to try and replicate or duplicate that picture is is almost impossible because there's so much, I think, uh, so much uh, different emotions going on in the picture. So then, as Pabli, our popular photographer, the Afghan girl, what is yours among your photographs and why? Which is your favorite photograph? Well, uh, some days, <laughs> well, actually, I don't really have uh, one favorite picture. I, I kind of see all the pictures as sort of one kind of body of work, and, you know, you like different pictures for different reasons, and uh, uh, it's hard to really come up with one. Uh, I think that the, the dust storm, these women in the dust, and it's uh, you know, windy and everything, I love that picture. But there's, there's, in this exhibition, uh, I have uh, maybe 20 of my favorite pictures <laughs> in this exhibition. So it's not just, not just one. Your favorite subject? Well, that depends on uh, sort of where I am, but I think that uh, I, I, I think that I love exploring, and I love the sense of discovery uh, almost anywhere. So my favorite sort of place or subject is really just the the, the simple act of kind of wandering and exploring and uh, walking out the front door. And it's just an adventure trying to, uh, first of all, just enjoy the fact that I'm still alive, but also uh, trying to, you know, enjoy the fact that, you know, uh, you know, being alive and there's all this amazing, this amazing world that we live in. So I think uh, that's the best way to start the day when I'm working, is to first of all just say, wow, this is, look at this, uh, amazing place that I'm in, could be Istanbul, it could be Burma, it could be Russia, and just to say this is, uh, uh, I'm really lucky to be here and now let me explore this place with my camera. And what is the process you follow in order to choose a location? Well, the, the way I pick a place to work in, a location to photograph in, is just uh, places that I've read about or you know seen a movie or television or talked to friends and places that sort of capture my imagination uh, uh, and it's just uh, a feeling it's sort of an intuitive uh, feeling of what would be an interesting place to go to I think uh, uh, I've been recently going to Cuba because it's a place that's uh, in transition. It's a place that has, it's very historical. Uh, we've had a very stormy relationship with Cuba. Uh, another place that I'm very keen to go to is uh, Iran, because Iran is a place that I've been reading about 
seeing on television for 30 years. And it's a place that is, uh, the place that is really fascinating is the place where there's a disconnect between the reality of the place and what we hear about in like the media or the, the perception of people who may not have ever gone to that place. So at least the media in the United States has painted Iran in a particular way. And I, I know personally from friends and people I know that it's not that way at all. So I want to go and see for myself and make up my own mind because I, I have a hunch that it's going to be really an amazing experience and much different from what I've learned about on, say, uh, CNN or the BBC. Uh, how long do you stay in a you know place in a location? Is there any minimum or maximum you know uh, time interval? Well, I think as a traveler or even as a tourist, uh, and particularly as a photographer, you need to really spend at least uh, a week in a place. My first trip to India, I, I was there for two years. I spent two years there without going home. I got there and I stayed for two years. Um, I can't do those long trips now because I have other responsibilities, but I try and go for a minimum of one week uh, or sometimes two. Uh, it's a bit difficult to do three weeks, but I think in order to penetrate uh, culture, to meet people, to start to understand the vibe of a place and what makes a place tick, uh, you need to get deep into the the situation and, and I think it takes you know a week and I also think that you need to go back to a place multiple times to continue to really understand the, the culture and uh, you know the people uh, when you approach your subject do you usually find yourself planning the frame more or uh, responding to it well, I think that um, my approach is more spontaneous and it's more just taking what's sort of offered to me without really trying to, uh, I would prefer, my main way of working, my preferred way of working is to just walk down the streets of a city or a village and just simply photograph what's in front of my lens uh, without trying to without trying to manipulate or you know trying to. So uh, I, I I love just uh, capturing these fleeting moments, these serendipitous moments, and just really being kind of like a fly on the wall. How do you decide on an image, or uh, what do you consider a strong image when you go through your shots? I think this is a strong image right here. <laughs> it is really. <laughs> well, I think, um, you know, as you go through your pictures, sometimes there's thousands and thousands of pictures, uh, you have a kind of a, a gut reaction to some. And some pictures you remember, some pictures you can't forget. And uh, as, as time goes on, the pictures that you want to revisit, the pictures you want to be that are kind of stuck in your mind, uh, are the ones that become pictures that you love and pictures that you think are important, pictures that are you know, I think, I think the great pictures uh, are ones that, that, have, that, that change us in some ways, that we learn something from these pictures that, that maybe have some emotion that make us want to you know, laugh or, or cry or have some 
empathy with other people. Um, you know, uh, th these are the pictures which uh, remain, and these are the pictures that w we end up becoming, going back to over and over. Yeah, uh, and it must be difficult finding that unique uh, point of view each time, I'm sure. What stimulates you while exploring outside when shooting? I think it's always best to not to have, not to be, not to plan so much. You get to a place, it's better to be your mind, have your mind free and just to uh, be open to anything that you see uh, and to try and uh, see things in a new way. I think that's uh, the best way to, to operate too. Uh, because, uh, you know, if I'm in a place in India or whatever, I, I want to just be, uh, it, I, it always needs to be kind of a sense of discovery. And somehow you're always engaged. Um, and it, it needs to be uh, something that you are, um, you almost get into sort of a meditative state. It's hard to describe it when I'm uh, walking out the door, perhaps initially you don't really see any pictures, nothing really captures your eye, but as you start to explore and you get into this particular, when you stop thinking about yesterday and tomorrow and what you're gonna have for lunch and you start to concentrate on the here and now, uh, what's right here, at this moment, uh, then I think um, you start seeing things which normally you might pass by. So I think you have to be very present in, in the moment. I think that's kind of the key. A technical question. Uh, how was the transition from analog to digital? Uh, for me, it wasn't so difficult. I was. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I quickly, uh, I, I really uh, love the fact that you can instantly see your pictures. But as time went on, the thing about digital, which really I thought was revolutionary and just an amazing advantage, was uh, that you could shoot in extremely low light. Because I love to photograph the kind of dark, situations when it's kind of moody and, and uh, for me digital was was was perfect because uh, I, I could never shoot like that with, with film. Uh, when it got to a certain, when it got kind of dark, uh, I'd either have to get a tripod. Anyway, um, I have no uh, nostalgia whatsoever for film and I think that, uh, I think I'm making better pictures now with digital than uh, I ever did with film because of this, uh, you know, the, the, the speed also of the, of, the, of the camera. And I'm sure that everybody is curious about what kind of cameras and lenses do you use today? <laughs> That's it right there. That's my new camera. <laughs> It's it's uh, it's shocking how good the quality is. Then we all are photographers, aren't Absolutely, we? Absolutely, man. Um, but uh, you know, it's uh, cameras today, whether it's a Leica or a Sony or a Canon or a Nikon. These are all. There's not so much difference between cameras, so uh, uh, it's really, I mean, it's kind of a cliche, but it's really the eye behind the camera, whether you are using a, you know, a pinhole camera or a large format camera. It just depends on uh, how you want to photograph. There's no right, there's no wrong, it's just whatever uh, 
you want to, whatever gives you pleasure. <laughs> I don't know what to say. But uh, I, miss one I, I think it's, uh, in a way, the cell phone is so much, uh, you can work much more um, unobserved. You get this big camera out and everybody kind of freaks out. Uh, whereas with the phone, I mean, walk around town, everybody's on their phone. So, you know, you can actually photograph and nobody knows, any, you know. And what do you believe are your most important skills that made you a successful photographer? I think being willing to, uh, being willing to uh, um, endure pain and suffering. Say that. <laughs> I'll try my best. And then I'll then we'll continue. Bence acı çekmek en önemli şeylerden bir tanesi becerilerim. I'm just joking. That was joke. No, I think that um, the, the, the, the the components or the elements to being uh, for me was uh, persistence. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of uh, working sort of year after year. Uh, and, you know, so there's a certain discipline, there's a certain hard work that's involved. Uh, curiosity, of course, uh, willing to take risks. And not just, I'm not talking about going into a war zone. Uh, when I started my freelance career, I quit my job and went to India for two years. So it was a kind of a risk, because there was no guarantees. Uh, but uh, I think that's uh, being willing to, uh, uh, when I said about, you know, that there is a certain, you, you have to, uh, persevere and have to be persistent, as I said. I think these are, I think it's fairly simple. I don't think it's so different from other types of work uh, that require a lot of effort and time. But just one more point up, just that I, I really, it, it's, it's, I find it pleasurable, enjoyable, fulfilling, and uh, there's nothing, for me, there's no more greater pleasure and photographing. So when I said that, uh, I mean, there is a lot of work, but for me, I, it, it's, it's, it's in a positive way. It's not, uh, it's something I, I enjoy. Uh, if it was drudgery, we often think of work as sort of boring and, and, and kind of, we want to work. Like no. a banker? Like being a banker? Or, or, or you know, a bank. singing a dish. Yeah. I mean, uh, that, that's, so, but for me, I, I get a great amount of satisfaction out of, uh, out of my photography. And uh, you consider yourself as a documentary photographer, uh, but you have crossed over to fine art. Do you see yourself as an artist? Well, I think that's, I, I see myself as somebody who uh, tells stories and photographs the world and tries to have a particular point of view. Um, I, I think that uh, it's possible to uh, photograph the world as it is and to do it in a very creative and a very artistic way, uh, in, a, in an honest way. Um, so I think you can uh, do both, perhaps. You can be a you can photograph the world in a very artistic way, which is reflecting the way the world really is. There are some artists, photographers, who create fantasies, which is perfectly valid. But for me, I, I prefer to, I think truth is often stranger than fiction. And for me, uh, photograph finding these incredible situations in, in real life. Um, Going back to the work of uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson or Henri Cartier, these people we 
spoke about earlier, or, or, or Goulart, um, at the, originally they were perhaps doing documentary work for magazines. And we look at their work 50 years, uh, and these are like incredible pictures which take on special significance, and uh, they become something, I don't know, special. Uh, so I, I think it's just a matter of words, and sometimes it's, I think it can, it can achieve both. Well, um, there seems to be a flood of images on the internet in, by Instagram and we all use it. Uh, and we know you have an Instagram account too, as we all have. <laughs> Do you think the mass of images that are taken and shared have affected your industry because people are traveling more and sharing almost everything, uh, leaving nothing much to explore? Well, I think it's great that uh, people, uh, I mean, I, I have uh, my camera and I send pictures around. Um, I think there's a distinction between uh, uh, pictures of your friends and having lunch or going to a party and uh, somebody who's very, you know, maybe trained or doing some uh, interesting, I, I think that, uh, so I think there's a distinction and that, uh, you know, it's sort of like all the text messaging. I do, you know, dozens of text messages a day, but it doesn't mean that those text messages are, you know, important literature or have any meaning to anybody else beyond myself and that person I'm sending. So, uh, I think it's great that we all sending literally billions and billions of pictures around the world, but um, but they serve a purpose. But I don't think uh, they're memorable beyond that particular. But I don't think it's a threat to. I don't think these pictures are a threat to sort of fine art photography any more than your sort of random text messages are a threat to perhaps a, a novelist or a political commentator who uh, has 20 or 30 years of experience and or a clever, you know. So they're two different things. So uh, what is your advice for the amateur and professional photographers here today? Well, when I, I worked on a newspaper for two years and uh, one of my regrets was I spent all my time shooting for the newspaper and all, very little time shooting for myself and just photographing things that interest, interested me. So the kind of the moral of the story or my advice is, uh, you know, photograph things that give you, give your life meaning and things that are important to you and uh, photograph for your own pleasure because life is short and uh, you should be doing things that, well, that give you satisfaction. Uh, so what about Turkey? I would like to ask, do you have any projects planned uh, for Turkey? Anything you would like to do here? Actually, I've been, uh, we've been discussing in the last day and a half uh, some places and some projects to uh, photograph here in Turkey. Uh, Turkey is a, is, a, is a rich country uh, culturally, uh, geographically, uh, and it, there's uh, so many different layers of things to photograph here. So uh, there's no end to subjects and places to go and, and photograph. So I'm very excited about the prospect of coming back and exploring uh, this part of the world with my camera. So it, it's, uh, uh, I, I've actually been here, I don't know, on maybe a half a dozen different occasions and, and photographed 
but I, I've really not even begun to scratch the surface. Well, my last question. Uh, what is your next project or destination in the plan? Well, my next uh, sort of trip is next week I'm going to uh, Italy and then to uh, Russia, to St. Petersburg uh, for an exhibition. And, uh, and then I'll be in Copenhagen and uh, in Monte Carlo. And then I'm going to go back to Cuba and continue to photograph. But I'm, uh, I'm starting to uh, organize uh, my travel plans for next year. And I definitely want to put uh, uh, Turkey and our, this, we're hoping that this exhibition uh, will go to Tehran next year. And uh, we're all very excited about going there and supporting that exhibition. So lots of work. Thank you very much. And we have some questions from uh, our audiences. Okay. One question from everybody in the audience. Yeah. So we're going to go through the entire uh, audience. Uh, there is one English. Uh, which was the hardest conflict area that you have been and uh, why was it hard? Okay. I think it was definitely uh, Afghanistan because it was so dangerous. Uh, you, uh, you know, the battlefield was not so defined. It, it was very fluid, and you never knew exactly who was who. And they, you know, they, they had this expression uh, about the, the fog of war. And uh, the Afghans are famous as being fighters, but they were, uh, my experience was, they had a lot of, often had a lot of courage, but they weren't very well trained, which meant things could go terribly wrong at any moment. And uh, when you have bombs, and it, it can get very uh, scary. And uh, so, I think I would say Afghanistan Öncelikle çok fazla sorunuz var, çok çok teşekkür ediyoruz ama hepsini sormak pek mümkün olmayacak. İçerisinden birkaç tane daha seçmek zorunda kalacağız. Ama bütün sorularınızı kendilerine ulaştıracağız, vereceğiz. There is lots of, you know, questions, so I will ask one or two more. Uh, I saw one paparazzi question. Did you fall in love anybody that you took? Her photograph. I mean, is there anyone? Many times. Many times. <laughs> Every day. So another question: Why colors? Uh, we are recognizing that you are using, you know, lots of colors in your photography. You are not using uh, white and black, uh, but colors. Why is that? Well, you know, the world is in color. Uh, so it's more logical and it makes more sense to photograph the world you know, as it is. Black and white is sort of an abstraction. I, I love black and white, but it, it actually makes more sense to photograph in color because that's more true to the world around us. But I've never really been interested in uh, color photography. Uh, I'm more interested in the story, I'm more interested in the humanity, I'm more interested in how kind of shapes and composition, how they work together. But I, the color is not my first sort of objective. So, uh, from Alexandra. There is a question from Alexandra. Oh, Alexandra, yeah. uh, where is she? Where is she? Alexandra. Alexandra. So I'm so inspired by your incredible photos. Many questions in my mind. First, uh, you studied the cinematography. Which movies inspired you, and which ones would you recommend uh, to watch? Growing up and living in the States, 
most of my the films are, uh, well, let me just go and jump into the list. I think uh, The Seven Samurai, it's a Japanese film. Uh, the Bicycle Thief, uh, an Italian film. Uh, um, the uh, the, the uh, rules of the game. Um, but Citizen Kane, uh, Orson Welles, the best film ever, I think. Uh, Billy Wilder, a great director, uh, made a movie called Sunset Boulevard, an incredible movie. Uh, Stanley Kubrick, uh, As of Glory, uh, all of his films were, were great. Um, so, um, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's part of my list. Um, Brazil as a sort of a British film. Um, that, that, that's, a, that's a part of it. Sevin Ismailova, doğru mudur? Uh, do you think catching the right moment when um, taking photo is a talent or does it come by? I think it's mostly practice. Um, I think that uh, there is, you know, the idea of, of talent. Um, you know, the, the, you can, well, just to make it a shorter answer, uh, I think that a significant part of it, 80% can be, it's more learned than just sort of talent. So, of course, the Afghan girl. Uh, how did you feel when you saw Afghan girl for the second time and after 20 years, I think, huh? 17 years. 17 years ago. Well, we, we had no idea if she was alive. We didn't know where she was living. And uh, I was convinced that it would be impossible to find her. So when we actually found her, uh, we were all you know, thrilled and, and like so happy that because there she was still alive. A lot of we had gotten reports that she had, had been killed or had died. So it was uh, great to be able to find her and help her. Uh, John uh, he asked, there's some rumors about that uh, during the shooting of the Afghan girl, your assistants have made some, you know, how can I say? Yeah. Once, once you have taken the Afghan girl picture, uh, they say that while during that picture, you helped her and healed her about this relation. Is that is that true? You heard right? about. Uh, she was probably in the bed. Oh, yeah, well, I, I, yeah, I think the uh, point is that, um, you know, her picture had been used in, in books and everything. So what we immediately did was talk to her and her husband about some compensation, some payment. Uh, for the use of, of the picture, so we wanted to, you know, help her and to give give back to her because if you, um, I mean, the, the, the picture was used for so many years that it was right for her to receive something for that. There's another nice question from Sali. Uh, as being a Westerner, sometimes it might be a little bit annoying uh, for the local people that you are capturing their life. Uh, how do you approach them? I'm very curious about it. For example, what do you wear? How do you talk? 
because I think that your works have the feelings of you are li literalizing our happiness or screams through your photography. Is that true or how do you evaluate the, those things? I don't understand the question. No. <laughs> it's a long question actually. But well, I can tell you, uh, I, I just wear, I, I generally just wear a pair of pants and a shirt. Yeah. Nothing special. That's one other part of the question. Yes, I mean, what is your approach to, you know, make them, uh, how can I accept you to take their photo? It's just, I think you, it, it's so uh, simple. I think you just have to uh, approach people with a certain uh, uh, respect. I think you have to uh, create a mood of, uh, there's a, this, uh, you have to, uh, uh, you know, I think humor, humor, uh, and if, if you meet somebody on the street, you have to create a mood where they're going to want to cooperate, they're going to want to help you. Stop somebody and say, I want to take your picture. They say, well, who are you? And I'm late. I don't want to, you know, I got to go. And then you have to try and convince them or try and explain to them why you want to take their time. And uh, if you do this five or 10,000 times, you start to kind of get a sense of how this works. <laughs> and y you have to understand that not everybody wants to be photographed. Some people do, some people don't. And you accept it and you Keep moving. It's not a big deal. So, Mimar Sinan Tercan. Burada bir sürü soru var. Arka arkaya 5-6 tane. Uh, let me first, you know, read in Turkish and then we are translating. So, there's lots of questions in one This question is too long. Let's go to yes, the next one. Yes, it is. <laughs> no, we will ask that one. <laughs> Uh, first of all, fotoğrafı, uh, ben istersen Türkçesini şey yapayım, sen İngilizcesini çevirmek istersen Türkçe olanlar da öyle yapalım. <gülüyor> tamam. Ee, fotoğrafın teknolojiyle ilişkisini nasıl tanımlarsınız? <gülüyor> i̇stersen yüksek sözü söyleyeyim, belki yabancı katılımcılarımız da var. Fotoğrafın teknolojiyle ilişkisini nasıl tanımlarsınız? How would you explain the relationship between photography and technology? Sizce fotoğraf tarihsel bir geri dönüş yaşamalı mı? Is that the, the, do you think that the photography should go back the historical background? <gülüyor> I have no idea what that means. I think uh, they try to ask if analog uh, was better. Should the technology go back through? Is it, is it improvement or you know is it is it losing your job or is it expensive? I don't think about film for even one second. Um, and I don't think of it as technology. I think of it as, as a you know, picture on a piece of paper. Yeah. Um, any more than when I get into a car, turn on the, and go, I don't, I'm not thinking about technology. I'm thinking about, I want to get from here to there. Yeah. It's just simply a, a way to, get somewhere. So I, the camera to me, I, it, of course it's a piece of technology, but to me it's just a way to make a picture. Actually I could understand that they are worried about uh, the technology make uh, photography so standardized, you know? You want to translate that? I'll translate more of things, I think. Uh, do you want me to begin your comment first and then... Well, I think a, a photograph, whether it's analog or digital, ultimately, for me, yeah. is the picture on a piece of paper. Yeah. Or, or a digital screen, a two-dimensional digital screen. Doesn't matter, I mean. Either. Whether it's film or digital, black and white or color, it doesn't matter. Okay. What matters is is it interesting? Mm -hmm. 
Does it tell a story? Is it something that I, I want to look at? Is it something that I learned something that I want to maybe look at again? Whether it's film or digital or paper and pencil or a painting uh, or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It just happens to be that my tool, I could be using a hammer and a chisel. It just happens I use a camera. I don't have, I don't have any idea how the camera works. All I know is I get a picture. So I'm not very technically oriented. So teşekkür ederiz. Bir sürü geldiniz oldu. Have you been in a situation where you put your camera down and helped, uh, or is documenting the situation more important? So the questions of given an opportunity either to help somebody yeah. or take a picture. Yeah. Well, it's your choice. Of course. Or of course, you take the picture. <laughs> it was a question between like saving a life and making a picture. Eğer konu bir insan hayatını kurtarmak veya fotoğraf çekmekse fotoğraf çekmeyi tercih edersiniz. No, I think obviously I'm, I'm joking, of course. Şaka yapıyorum tabii ki. Uh, I think I think almost every one of us here, if given a choice between, you know, helping somebody. Picture is more important than being able to help somebody in some extraordinary situation. So I think that, that the natural reaction for the, the human reaction is, you know, 99, most, most all of us, I'm sure, would help somebody and, and uh, then, uh, you know, so uh, having said that, I've never actually been in a situation where I was confronted with that situation where, you know, do I take the picture and help, you know, I, I never actually did. You didn't saw any dying uh, well, children? Uh, the times where I've been in that situation, uh, I've been uh, it's in a hospital. Uh, I, I never, I usually get to the story after a refugee camp or a hospital or there's doctors or something. So I'm not generally or ever in the situation where bombs are flying and somebody... I actually, uh, thinking back, there was a time where there was actually a, a telebon, a tele in Kabul, and I was with a reporter, and we actually took this guy to the hospital and saved his life. But uh, I don't think about it as something heroic. It was just we did what any, any one of us would do. So there is a question about Pirelli calendar. Pirelli takvimleri hakkında bir soru. How did you feel when you got an offer from Pirelli calendar 2013? Uh, like Pirelli <laughs> calendar. Pirelli is it's one of the most sought after, one of the most uh, important photographic assignments in the world. E, kredi takvimi de dünyada gerçekten çok önemli olan bir e, fotoğraf çeşitliliği olan bir takvimdir. E, bunu bilmeniz istediği için anlamı rica ederim. But the Pirelli calendar has traditionally been a nude calendar. E, bir Pirelli takvimi e, çıplak bir, e, o çıplak insanları ele alan bir takvimdir. Which I must say I would have been happy to do. E, çok, bundan da çok mutlu olduğumu söylemeliyim. However, uh, we decided, I decided, let, let's do something different, let's do something unexpected. Ben yeni bir şey, e, hiç beklenmeyen bir şey yapmak istedim. Let's find some supermodels, let's find beautiful women, professional models, who are involved in humanitarian work, who are trying to make the world a better place. And, and photograph them with their clothes on. E, ben süper modelleri bulup, o profesyonel modelleri bulup, dünyayı daha güzelleştirmeleri için e, üze, üzerlerinde e, giysiler olarak fotoğraflamak istedim bu sefer onları. So it was a bit of a, we, we created a lot of buzz because uh, suddenly uh, we had taken the calendar in a very different direction 
and uh, the models, these gorgeous uh, women who were doing extraordinary things, building schools, building hospitals, doing some very, very serious work with uh, the environment. Now they were, they had a voice, and they could talk about their work. I must say that the Pirelli people were very supportive. Uh, they were very supportive of, of me and doing this calendar in this different way. Uh, to your opinion, what is the most interesting thing about Turkey? First there. And the question is asked by a Russian. So uh, by the time she's, I think Daria, yes? She is curious about what you are thinking about Russia, where you've been in Russia before, and your thoughts about Russia. Well, I think first let's talk about Turkey. Turkey, uh, it has such variety uh, of, of climate, of terrain. There's so many different sort of ethnic, ethnic groups. Uh, and uh, you have uh, this incredible kind of crossroads where you have, you know, ancient Roman ruins, you have uh, ancient Greek ruins. There's all this uh, history, which I think most people uh, aren't aware that some of the great historical sites in the world are, are here in Turkey. And, you know, they, they, what you have here uh, really rivals what they have in Italy or uh, Greece. And uh, so there's a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, depth to the culture and the land here, which uh, as, as a photographer, it's very kind of visual.